Hey guys, welcome to my house. Now we've done beginner build series before. We had the bed, we have the dining room table. Today, we're doing a coffee table. Now the thing about this coffee table here is it's Irina's favorite coffee table, but the problem is, is this coffee table, well, it's, they don't make them anymore. Uh, second problem with it, even if they still made it, it costs about 500 bucks. So the goal here is going to recreate this exact coffee table for a fraction of the price and with limited tools. We'll say three to four tools. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. Let's go. All right, guys, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Ariot. Now, Ariot's been a sponsor of this channel for quite some time, and we really appreciate him. The great thing about him is that I've bought their stuff way before they ever worked with this. Now, one of my favorite things is the workwear in the shop. First order of business are the boots. These are the six inch rebar wedge boot. They are the work boot. They are slip resistant. They're oil resistant. They're made out of premium leather. They got a solid toe up front. They are put through the ringer, as you can see. I work on them and they work great, especially in these cold weather conditions. Next up, we have the Dura Light Stretch Canvas, the FR edition. I've spoken about this jacket many a times before. This is a jacket that stretches to the work that you're doing. It's abrasion resistant, it's flame resistance. In fact, category four flame resistant. And one of the best things about it is that US sourced fabric. Be sure to click the link in the description to get 10% off your first order today and see the list that I've created of some of my personal favorites. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. Let's go. All right, so as I can see, here's the table, uh, no longer available, and that's a bummer. Now, fortunately for us, uh, the plan of action is gonna go pick up these materials. I'm thinking keeping it at a hundred bucks or so. So we'll go see what we can do. the size we want, but we have like two player option that's actually a lot easier than before. Alright, so these are a homemade round blank. They're already sanded, rounded over, and beautiful. And they're 42 bucks a piece. We're doing two of them, so 80 bucks for 32 for them doing the whole work ourselves. So we'll get two of these and one extra time. And the last ingredient here is we need a three quarter inch dowel. I think one of them extra price. Alright, let's get to work. All right, let's see if we can turn $100 into $500. All right, so first tool, first part, we gotta take this dowel and cut into four equal parts. 15 and a half is the height of this table that we need to recreate. So if you have a miter saw, great. If not, just use a circular saw. Okay, so I got my dowels uh, secured, standing on the bottom. You can always secure them with screws or pins like I just did. We need a little bit of primer and then some satin black to make them look like the legs that are currently on the existing table. All right, while the dowels are drying, we gotta start handling the preparation of these tabletops. Um, these are allegedly already staying ready, but we gotta get everything down to 220 grit. Though the top is nice and smooth, the sides are a little, you know, and grainy. So we'll take this off, give it a quick light sand all the way down to 220, and then we'll start doing the stain stuff. Tool number two, the sander.
Okay, and the next thing is we're gonna create these holes that are gonna accompany the dowels to go in, right? So they're gonna have four of them, one on each side. They're two and a half inches recessed inside. We're gonna use our third tool, and hopefully our final tool, a drill with a Forstner bit. It, this is just three quarters of an inch, the thickness of the dowel, any kind of bit will do. This just creates a cleaner cut. The first set is gonna go all the way through. The second set is only gonna go partially, halfway through. I'm gonna create a little stop marker with a piece of tape so I know when to stop, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get it ready. So stain wise, the, the original table has hints of uh, tan or a little bit of light brown and uh, some white washing. Not specifically white washing done before, but subtle kind of tones of it. So what I came up with, we're gonna use a little bit of this uh, weathered oak and a little bit of this uh, pickled oak. One has a little bit more white tendencies, one has grayish brownish. So we're gonna first lay down the, the tanner one, the uh, weathered oak, let it dry, lightly, lightly sand it, and then give the white pickled oak on there and hopefully both will take and go from there. I'm not guaranteeing we're gonna match this 100%, but we're gonna do our best. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. I put a liberal amount there because I want everything to soak in. I'm gonna let it dry overnight and I'll see you guys in the morning for assembling. Let's go. All right, it's day two. Everything is dry, paint, stain. It's assembly day. So we're gonna flip the very tippy top one over and this is the one that has the partial holes. We're gonna take some wood glue and our dowels and we're gonna secure it in place. Now it should be a really snug fit because these are perfect uh, cuts. After that, we will cover some tape on these, leaving two inches overhang and slide the bottom in. At that point, we're gonna use our third or fourth tool and I'll tell you what it is in a second. See this little amount of wood glue squeezing out? That's what you wanna see, good spread. All right, so this part right here, the three quarter inches before the tape is uh, the part that's actually gonna be gluing and holding the second tier at the bottom. Now, you might be asking why am I lubricating the, the entire piece, even the part of the leg that'll be sticking out? Well, if we learn anything from high school sex ed, a little bit of lubrication decreases friction. Everything's in place. Now before the wood glue dries, wipe it off, obviously, to make sure it's nice and clean. Woo, looking good. And the last tool, we're gonna start taking the tape off, is we're gonna take our brad nailer and we're gonna go at an angle to ensure that this piece does not slide out. Just added insurance, really. So we're gonna go at an angle. Just like that. 
Looking good. Okay, so um, took a glance at the table. It's it, this is a great color. The problem is that table has a little bit more tones of brown on it, and I've already put two different coats of stain on here. I'm gonna try a third, bring a little bit more browning. This will be my last ditch effort. It still looks great, but we'll see what we can do. Um, we have the old faithful fruit wood. I've used it many a times. I'll put a nice easy glaze on it and then pray for a miracle. But regardless, I'm really happy with what's coming out already. Let's start sealing and securing this coffee table of ours because we have kids and they're gonna try to destroy it. Our job is to prevent it. This is my go-to clear coat. I use it all the time. It's a water-based clear coat. This is a satin, I think. Oh, that's a big chunk. Uh, I'm gonna stir it out. And then I'm gonna shoot it with this HVLP sprayer. A few coats, my go-to is always maybe like three to four coats and then I should be good to go from that point on. It's cold outside, so let's dress up. All right, moment of truth. West Elm table, $500, can't even buy it anymore. So we're gonna take this table and, and turn it into that. So what we have here is a table that only costs us $100 to make, and we only use four tools that an average DIYer probably has in their garage. And if they don't, they probably should start with those tools. So overall, this table came out almost identical in terms of dimensions, the radius, the height uh, of the previous table from West Elm. Only different is because the table that West Elm has is made out of oak, different stain took differently. For example, the white can go right in the pores versus this pine table does not have any pores. Though the color is completely different, it is still equally as appreciated as the West Elm table. Thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. This was a blast. Um, I don't think we've ever made anything that fast or that short of a project. I think it should be motivation for you guys to finally start building something. Courage and sweat, guys, that's our motto here. We're not trained professionals. We're just not afraid to trial and fail and learn something along the way. And hopefully you guys take on a project like this to get started somewhere. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video with your friends. And if you're running the channel and you like videos like this, Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every single time a video comes out right away. If you want to connect with me more on my social medias, all the links will be down in the description below, as well as my Patreon account and the merch section, all that helps support this channel. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.